welcome back this is a second lecture in the series on Riemann integration as well as Riemann stages so last time we motivated why we should look for upper and lower sums give with respect to partition and we also looked at few examples so what we will do in this lecture is again we'll continue with two more important examples okay one example I actually left it as an exercise in the last lecture I don't know how many of you did that anyway we'll do that another lecture is where things may not go go the way we wanted okay we will do those two then after that we will uh, uh, prove some of the stand very 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 elementary results upper upper and lower sums okay yeah and we will also introduce the notion of Riemann steels integral okay very elementary version to start with okay so stay tuned we are ready for the next one okay all right so let us look at do you remember i left one ex easy exercise namely let's look at f from 0 1 to r where f of x equal to x x square okay then this is an increasing function so we had looked at a uh, abstract increasing function let us try to see whether we can do it with respect to this specific one right and we want to find some notion of integral of this okay let us look at this right so i have the interval 0 1 and what did we do there we broke it into n equal parts 1 by n 2 by n n minus 1 by n and this is n by n this is of course 0 by n okay so this is my partition pn right now let's look at with respect to this partition okay what is the lower sum lfpn this is now this is an increasing function therefore in the interval let us say i minus 1 by n to i by n this is my ith interval okay what is the minimum of the function the the GLB of the function on this interval is now i minus 1 whole squared by n squared and you understand this where does i run from 1 to n you follow that into length of the interval length of the interval is always 1 by n yes okay now what and similarly what is u of pn u of pn is so on this interval right this is an increasing function therefore the maximum actually is attained at i by n therefore the gl sorry lub of f on this interval is i squared by n squared therefore it's exactly the similar thing i squared by n squared into 1 by n are you following i equal to 1 to n yeah so this is very easy this is high school now this is 1 by n cubed into summation of okay k squared where k running from i, I equal to 1 therefore k running from 0 to n minus 1 yeah same as 1 to n minus 1 and this is again 1 by n cubed summation k equal to 1 to n of k squared so you know what the sum is this is the first term l of p n is going to be 1 by n cubed I think it's n into n plus 1 into 2n plus 1 by 6 if I remember right okay give it or take it so what is this I can take n out therefore it's n cubed 1 by 1 plus n and 2 by 1 plus n and then oh I forgot this 1 by 1 plus n and that's one yeah and this just one uh, that's for it by n cubed 6 n cubed so where does it go to as n goes to infinity you can see this goes to 2 by a 6 which is 1 by 3 in a similar fashion you can see u of p n that also goes to 1 by 3 right now do you think that I should expect this remember our idea is these things approximate the area under the curve 
what is the area under the curve this is it okay this is okay this y equal to x this y equal to x squared and at one they meet okay y equal to x squared right this is the area we are looking for all right okay so from our high school days we know 11th and 12th standard we know the integral of x squared between 0 and 1 definite integral is x cubed by 3 and between 0 and 1 therefore it's 1 by 3 so it seems to tally yeah so pause review and proceed see the important point of all these exercises is how to find the upper sum and lower sum and sometimes how to choose a partition in such a way that our computation becomes more meaningful or much easier that's what one has to learn just not the theory alone okay good now we want to look at a contrast okay so what is the contrast let me see whether i had uh, check to start yeah okay it is working <laughs> okay so the contrast is what is called as a Dirichlet function this is the last example of the so-called Dirichlet function l Dirichlet function so this is a function from 0 1 to r and this is a characteristic function of rationals in 0 1 which is same as saying f of x equal to 1 if x is in q and zero otherwise of course remember my x is supposed to be in zero one so i'm not writing okay now i want to know okay the upper and lower sum corresponding to this fun for this function right let us do that now suppose i don't care let p be any partition okay of x naught x1 xn okay so let us look at this typical partition xi minus an ith partition xi okay now what do you think i know i want to know mi that is mi of f what is mi the glb of the values remember the function takes only two values zero and one therefore glb has to be either zero or one do you think it is always zero why that's because the density of irrations between xi minus 1 and xi in any two real numbers i can always find an s which is an irrational number in between therefore f of s will be zero therefore the infimum of f on this sub interval will always be zero for every i and what do you think capital mi is again yes you are right by again by the density of rationals between these two real numbers xi minus 1 and xi there is a rational number t therefore f of t will be 1 therefore mi will always be 1 remember f takes only two values so i have to decide whether it is 0 or 1 that's it very simple isn't it very good therefore let us look at what should be l of p see notice that i have no idea about what partition okay but the function is very simple that's why i'm able to do that so that's going to be mi into xi minus xi minus 1 okay right but this is always zero therefore this is going to be zero right now what is u of p u of p is going to be capital mi into xi minus xi minus 1 but this is always 1 this is i equal to 1 to n therefore what will i have i will have something like x1 minus x0 then x2 minus x1 so 1 plus xn minus x n minus 1 you see that x1 will cancel with this x2 will cancel with this and xn minus 1 will cancel with this therefore i will be left with xn minus x0 as we did in monotone case okay increasing case this is b minus a or which is 1 minus 0 yeah so what do you think i hope you have concluded we have found that for this so-called directly function the material of any partition the lower sum is always zero and upper sum is always one okay 
so do you think that these two areas are going to somehow I mean, approximate the area under the graph you see that there is a, some kind of problem there do you see that our original idea was looking at geometrically LFP denoted the sum of all areas of rectangles which are below the inscribed inside the graph and UFP just about circumscribing the graph okay so LFP was approximating the area of the graph from inside UFP was approximating the area from the outside okay but at any time they are at always constant one is zero another is one so what does it say it looks like I may not be able to approximate the area that may or there may not be any area okay I may not be able to associate the notion of an area for this function is it uh, slightly disturbing yeah notice that you, you, you should you should learn to expect such things because when you want to solve any quadratic polynomial you you thought you can write down the solution minus b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac by 2a etc it's a very pretty formula but then you find then you have to take square root of b squared minus 4ac it may be negative number so you may not be able to find the you may start with the real polynomial but the solution may not the root may not exist as a real number okay so some such thing can happen okay we should learn to accept such things and we have to understand okay very good so let's stop here okay this is more than enough example now let's look at some of the properties okay so uh, we will go back to the general case a b to r this is a bounded function and bounded by little m and capital m right if you want to say there you can even take it this is the glb of fx as x varies over a b and this will be the same set with l u b of this set yeah okay that is f of a b it's the glb is this and it's l u b is this okay good very good so we are assuming it's bounded all right okay now let's look at let p be any partition okay let's look at lfp this is going to be summation mi xi minus xi minus 1 i i hope all of you remember what is mi it is the, the glb of the function on the interval ith sub interval xi minus 1 to xi very good now notice that what is the relation between mi and m what is the relation and similarly the upper sum i have something like u of p that is equal to summation capital mi into xi minus xi minus 1 1 to n and what is the relation between capital mi and m this is small m okay i hope all of you have uh, gone through or watch my video the third video which dealt with lub and glb okay let me quickly recall okay if a and b are non-empty subsets of r assume okay then alpha is the glb of a and beta is the glb of b okay then what's the relation between alpha and beta okay those of you who remember will immediately say the answer namely alpha is greater than equal to beta but even those who know should quickly go through this this is how you become master you become confident okay don't accept it yeah yes yes i remember it must be greater than alpha is greater than equal to beta don't don't do that try to do it the other way around okay now what i have to show is alpha is greater than equal to beta right what is alpha alpha is the greatest lower bound therefore that means for all x x is greater than or equal to alpha but you understand that okay now let's look at that take any x in a then x is also in b because x is a is contained in b therefore x is greater than or equal to beta therefore beta is a lower bound for a but alpha is the greatest lower bound for a therefore alpha is greater than or equal to beta do you see that this kind of proof within 10 seconds you should go through in your mind 
the same thing with glb sorry leb okay let alpha equal to leb of a and beta equal to leb of b right what do i want to claim i want to claim alpha is less than or equal to beta yeah now start with any x in a then x is contain x is in b and beta is an upper bound of b therefore x is less than or equal to beta therefore beta is an upper bound for a because for every x x is less than or equal to beta. but alpha is the least upper bound therefore what solution alpha is less than or equal to beta is it right can you go go through this quickly i will give you some chance to review this in mind okay don't have pen and paper try to go through this in your mind so let's go back to the earlier thing therefore now what is mi it is lub of this set fx where x lies in the interval xi minus 1 to xi but what is little m this is sorry this is glb and this is little m this is glb of the set fx but where does x run x runs from all of ab you understand that therefore if you call this set a and this set b you can see that a is a subset of b yeah therefore what is the relation m i is greater than or equal to m for all i similarly m i is less than or equal to m for all i do you understand that because this here i will have delete this by l u b and capital m capital m l u b then a is a subset of b therefore capital m i will be less than or equal to small m i yes therefore what is the relation we have so i have m i into x i minus x i minus 1 but each m i is less than or equal to m right and into x i minus x i minus 1 but this is b minus a this is a telescopic sum as we have seen earlier x1 minus x0 plus x2 minus x1 and so on so telescopic sum so i get this this is mi now next what is the relation between small mi and capital mi right because this is a non empty set small mi is a lower bound capital mi is an upper bound therefore what is the relation between them small mi will be less than or equal to capital mi therefore i have this is less than or equal to capital mi of xi minus xi minus 1 but that's equal less than or equal to summation m into xi minus xi minus 1 but that's equal to m into b minus a so what do you think I got? M into B minus A is less than equal to L F P, but that's less than equal to U F P, and that's less than equal to capital M into B minus A. Do you understand this? Pause, review, proceed. Yeah. Good. now we want to complicate the matter a little more okay now i want to introduce the so called i want to get into a new thing Raymond steel jess s t i e l t j e s steel jess integral integration we want to talk about okay and many students have problem with this because there is no geometry here the best way is there is a geometry but it's a little more complicated to explain okay and students will have more trouble with that the easier way for me is like this suppose i have a thin wire okay some length l okay b minus l right now it's not uniform density the density keeps varying right you understand suppose the density here is something the density here is something the density here is something the density here then if i want to say the weight or the mass of this wire okay of this length what how will i do that so this this density is d1 into this length and this density is d2 into this length and so on so sum it up 
di into the so called li where li is the length of the sub interval uh, assuming that it is constant you understand so if it is continuously varying what do you think i will do i have to in some sense write it by integral you have follow that yeah don't worry even this vague idea is good enough for you so you should know there is a reason why i want to talk about this kind of thing another reason is suppose you have you, you if you know something about probability theory finite probability theory okay suppose i have various events okay this is a sample space okay and i have various events x1 x2 xn this is a finite let us assume and each occurring is with probability p1 p2 pn so that you know the condition is pi equal to 1 so this standard thing is all equal probability 1 by n but it may vary you understand that therefore if i want to find out a subset e of x i consider as an event what is the probability the event takes place then i have to add with respect to the weights you follow that yeah these are the very vague thing okay this is good enough at present do not okay get worked up with this okay just learn to work this is a very easy way of looking at so i have a wire th a thin wire metallic thing and the density is continuously varying then if i want to find the weight of the wire okay how will i do that okay that's what we want to attend so but to start with we will make certain simplifying assumptions okay let alpha be an increasing function when i say increasing what i mean is non-decreasing that is x less than equal to y x is less than y implies alpha x is less than equal to alpha y or if you want you can write also less than equal to you understand so we will call it only increasing function right now again f is a function bounded function from a b to r right and let p be a partition as we are defined okay now let us look at xi minus 1 to xi okay my alpha is here okay right now what i want to do is what is the length of this with respect to alpha you are you following so i have the little mi capital mi little m capital m as earlier as earlier with respect to p partition mi capital mi etc now what i want to do is i want to form the the lower sum of f with respect to the partition p with respect to this alpha this alpha is may be called as a weight function or integrator because we are going to use it to integrate something so we are calling integrator it's just a name okay don't get worked up too much about this thing what is this by definition it is exactly similar but when i want to come to the length of the interval xi my xi by minus xi minus one i replace it by length of the interval measure with respect to alpha okay this measuring is not the standard length okay it has a distribution so it's something like alpha xi by alpha xi minus one do you understand this yes sure okay think of this is the not the standard length this is alpha length okay right for example so suppose my uh, alpha of uh, x equal to x squared and this is my point 1 by n and 1 by n minus 1 or let us say 1 by 4 and 1 by 2 right what is the length with respect to this alpha squared it will be 1 by 2 squared that is 1 by 4 minus 1 by 4 squared that is 1 by 16 therefore you know how to compute okay it is not quarter half minus 1 fourth but it will be something else 1 by 4 minus 1 by 16 okay you understand this okay this is just to have some kind of idea what is happening okay that is not important for what we are going to do is that okay then how do you think i will define ufp of alpha exactly the same way little mi sorry capital mi 
into alpha xi minus alpha xi minus 1. Okay. Next, when I take alpha of x equal to x, this is of course an increasing function. Do you see that? For this alpha, uFp alpha is nothing other than uFp. And LFP alpha is nothing other than LFP. Do you understand this? Because alpha xi will be xi, alpha xi minus will be xi minus. So, I, so this is more general than the Riemann, the, the Darboson. Okay, that's a Darboson for the partition. This is a Darboson with respect to the weight function or integrator alpha. Okay, so we can call it as Darbosoms. with respect to or related to the weight function or integrator alpha okay and when the integrator equal to the identity function we get back the standard alpha function is that clear to all now comes the important thing what do you know about this term in the bracket alpha xi minus alpha xi minus 1 That is non negative. Say, let us say it's positive again, okay? It did not be straight, but let us just say it's positive. Do you understand that? And similarly, this is positive. Have you understood? So, now what should be the analog of what we wrote here? Okay, let me just circle this with us something because this is a very important thing for us. What do you think will be the analog of this in the case of the Riemann Stilges or Darboson with respect to alpha? Why do you think it should be true? Let us go back. Okay. Now, the Lotus, look at the, as we did earlier, little m is less than equal to mi. You understand? Okay. Now, let us look at the ith term. Okay, in the sum L F P alpha. What is this? This is M I into alpha X I minus alpha X I minus one. Do you understand this? But we know that M is less than or equal to M I, and this is non-negative or this is positive. Therefore, if I multiply both sides of the inequality by this positive number, the inequality still remains the same way. Do you understand? So for each i, this is true statement. Therefore, I sum it over. Yeah. So what do I get? Here I will get L F P alpha. Here what will I get? This M is common. Therefore, I will get this alpha. Next, you see that this is increasing function. Therefore, again, I will have a telescopic sum. That is alpha X1 minus alpha X0 plus alpha X2 minus alpha X1 and plus so on and so forth then i'll have alpha xn minus alpha xn minus one so what i will get here this sum is telescoping it turns out to be m into alpha b e minus alpha a right because this is alpha a this alpha b this cancels with this this fellow will cancel with this this fellow will cancel with something previous term have you understood so what we have m into alpha b minus alpha a is less than equal to l f p alpha now what's the relation between l f p alpha and u f p alpha again look at so look at the typical i the term this little m i is less than equal to capital m i therefore i can multiply this by the positive quantity alpha x i minus alpha x i minus one you understand right therefore what will I have so I'll have m i into alpha x i minus alpha x i minus 1 is less than equal to capital m i into alpha x i minus alpha x i minus 1 and sum it and sum it why I can do that because these are all positive or non-negative this is your 
LFP alpha and this is UFP alpha so what I have got M times alpha B minus alpha A is less than equal to LFP alpha that's less than equal to UFP alpha and what do you think this will be less than equal to capital element to alpha B minus alpha A again the same proof here let's go back yeah so here what will I have capital MI will be less than equal to capital M multiply with this positive quantity and add so you will get this also are you convinced okay are you convinced of this inequality so we have the analog of the last inequality what is that M into alpha B minus alpha A is less than equal to LF P alpha which is less than equal to UF P alpha that's less than equal to capital M into alpha B minus alpha A okay this is the analog of the inequality so this is what I want you to learn because hereafter most often what I will do will be I will prove the results for Riemann integral the proof for the Riemann Steeljes integral which is using the weight function alpha or integrator alpha will be exactly the same kind of analysis what all we will need is we will write some inequality okay there I will be multiplying by xi minus xi minus 1 here I will be multiplying by alpha xi minus alpha xi minus 1 since they are not negative the inequality will retain the same sign this is the basic observation you have to learn once you are done that you can see the proofs are all easy and the reason why I want to do the uh, stick to Riemann integral to start with is as I said there you can explain the geometry okay so you can even foresee what kind of results I can prove okay so I will do that with with that we will stop today's lecture let me see I still have about four minutes I do not know whether I'll have time but let us do that suppose I have a partition P oh, okay P let us say a and B this is a standard notation I don't want to keep on uh, repeating xi minus 1 xi right now suppose I have introduced one extra node t here right? now I have a new partition q what are the elements x0 less than x1 less than xi minus 1 less than t less than xi etc etc less than xn which is equal to b it is equal to a you understand this is a new partition now what I want to know is what is the relation between LFP and sim LFQ right ok this is what I want to understand remember in last lecture even today's lecture when we saw when I looked at somewhat finer partition that is I have more nodes we saw something interesting happen we seem to have better approximation let us test it out okay we will look at it geometrically and we will give proof let us look at the simplest case okay I can write a complicated draw a complicated graph but you know the point to understand is very simple so it doesn't have to be complicated okay let us look at the function f of x equal to x let us say from 0 1 or so whatever it is okay on 0 1 right okay now suppose I have the partition 0 half and 1 right so on this what is the minimum minimum is 0 right on this the minimum is half right you understand that therefore how much what is the LP alpha this is 0 into half and then next is half into half one fourth this we had already seen yesterday right but suppose I need I put one extra node just here let us say one fourth if you want I can even put one by n but let us do that okay one by four now let us see that now how many partition intervals are there this is a q now in q I have this x naught and x1 I have a t in between now here the minimum the, the small m1 is zero therefore zero into the length of the interval is one fourth plus and here this in this the minimum is one fourth therefore it's going to be one fourth into the length of this is one fourth one fourth 
and this is the same okay this is half and half it's one fourth now do you see that we have increased this one fourth plus one by sixteen we increased you understand this yeah because here when we put zero this lot of areas were wasted in the original thing but the moment I introduced a node I was able to recover at least this much of area which was not earlier this because this is a rectangle which is inscribed inside under the graph and this area is included now are you following me sure for example here this much of area is not accounted for but suppose I took another one three fourths here and put a thing okay here this is what I will have no problem but here you can see is a three fourths into one fourth so this much of area is added here here this much of area is added so what do you get if I improve if I make take a finer partition what happens to the lower sum lower sum with a coarser partition P and lower sum with respect to the finer partition Q what is the relation between them does this picture give you an idea so this picture suggests L F P is less than equal to L F Q okay the proof is utterly trivial okay but the geometry is very interesting that is if I take a finer partition I seem to improve a better approximation to the area under the graph from the inside I can keep on improving the result you understand how do you prove this okay let us look at the LFP alpha see let us look at uh, let me call it J perhaps okay let me call it J because I let me write it as a varying one okay now in the formula for LFP okay so I can write it as I not equal to J of MI into XI minus XI minus 1 right okay and plus MJ into XJ minus XJ minus 1 the J term I am doing but LFQ you can see all these sums will be there because these are sub intervals that all these things will be there this sum will be there but when I come to J now I have to write in two fashions right is XJ minus 1 to T and T to XJ plus 1 do you understand this so let us have this this is my XJ minus 1 this is my XJ this is my T so let us look at MJ dash MJ double dash what is mj dash this is the glb of the function on this interval xj minus 1 to t what is mj double dash that is the glb of the function on the interval t to xj is it okay now what is the relation between mj dash and mj or let us say to mj and mj dash right you know that because mj dash is infimum of a GLB of a subset which is okay right mj dash is GLB of what f of x where does x run from xj minus 1 to t whereas mj runs from GLB xj minus 1 to xj right so this is a bigger set therefore it's a GLB you understand that therefore mj will be less than equal to because this is the GLB of a bigger set GLB of a bigger set is less than equal to GLB of the subset and similarly MJ for the same reason is less than equal to MJ double dash do you understand this therefore this sum the last sum here is going to be MJ dash into T minus XJ minus 1 plus MJ double dash into xj minus t do you understand this right but 
But what do we think? This is greater than or equal to. This is the same, but this fellow is greater than or equal to m j into t minus x j minus one. Why this is true? Because m j dash is greater than or equal to m j, and t minus x j minus one is positive. Remember that. That's very crucial. And similarly, this is greater than or equal to m j into x j minus t because m j double dash is greater than or equal to m j. This is not. Positive number, therefore, this inequality persists. But M J is common. When I take this out, what do I get? I get M J into X J minus X J minus one. Do you see that T and T cancels here? Right? Are you following? So what do I get here? I get exactly this term here. Therefore, I have proved L F Q is greater than equal to L F P. Therefore, if P is a this is a notion remember this means q has more nodes than p all the nodes of p are already in q and more perhaps okay then what is the thing we have found l of p is less than or equal to l of q have you understood now notice that if alpha the integrator alpha is an increasing function what do you think l of p alpha and l of q alpha how are they related Notice that the same thing we have to do, except what did I do? M J dash into alpha t minus alpha x j minus one. Right? This is increasing, therefore this will be non-negative. Therefore this inequality will still remain the same way. Please pay attention. This is why I said in the last class. Okay? Item. That's all we need. Do you understand? This is also clear. Okay. Next, wow. now the same thing. Let's look at this is the one. Now let's look at the upper sum. Now the upper sum it will tell me half. So you are taking too much of extra area, and again you are taking too much of extra area here. This is, the picture is not good, but anyway, you understand this? Because on this thing, the capital M one will be one. So, uh, sorry half and here the capital M2 will be 1 and this length is half you understand this much of area extra area here also is whereas suppose I introduce one node at 1 fourth then what do you think I will do I will take only this but here I have to take this much because 0 to 1 fourth the maximum or capital M1 is going to be only one fourth. Therefore, this much of area, extra area is thrown out. Similarly, if I take three fourths, right, then this is the area I can take. <coughs> this much of extra area is thrown out. So, what is the intuition? Intuition is U of P is greater than or equal to U of Q. If Q is final okay and how do you prove that please go through since I don't want to give time in my book also the, all these pictures will be drawn you can look at it and best thing is you discuss with your friends and the proof is exactly the same let alpha is increasing let me just do it for fun increasing then let's look at so I have x j minus 1 x j I have an extra node t <laughs> right now again let us do mj dash mj double dash then what is the relation between mj dash and mj what is this this is the least upper bound okay of the function f assumed here the values assumed are this interval therefore this will be less than or equal to and similarly mj double dash is less than or equal to mj therefore mj dash into alpha t minus alpha x j minus 1 will be less than or equal to m j into this object alpha t minus alpha x j minus 1 and similarly and similarly m j double dash right therefore if I look at u f p alpha okay I can write it as i not equal to j sum
ओके एम जे इंटू आलफा एक्स जे एक्स ई सारी ई ई नाट एक्स आलफा एक्स मैनस् वन प्लस प्लस एम जे इंटू आलफा एक्स जे मैनस आलफा एक्स जे मैनस वन ओके द जे टर्म एम रईटिंग सेपरेटली रईट बट यू एफ क्यू आलफा will be the first i not equal to j sum is the same but the second sum will be mj dash into alpha t minus alpha xj minus 1 plus mj double dash into alpha xj minus alpha t but that what we know is less than equal to the sum i not equal to j remains but this will be less than equal to m into alpha t minus alpha xj minus 1 Why this inequality is true? Remember, because these are all non-negative. And plus m into alpha x j minus alpha t. So what do you get? This cancel. Therefore, this I get a u f p alpha. You understand that? So what have we shown? We have shown if u q is a partition obtained. By adding one extra node to P, I have proved L of P alpha is less than equal to U of P alpha. Sorry, L Q alpha and U of P alpha is greater than equal to O of Q alpha. So again, try to internalize when I make a finer and finer partition, the area which I want to approximate from inside keeps increasing. And the area which I want to approximate from outside keeps decreasing. Okay, look at the picture. Please internalize, understand this. Okay, this quick way. Instead of just looking at only the inequality and analysis, you should also develop geometric intuition along the way. And suppose Q is a partition by adding finitely many points by induction. You can do that. Suppose P is got by adding something T one to T K in between some point, right? So by induction, you can see. This result is true always. Whenever Q is a partition finer than P, these results are true. Okay. So we will stop today. Please pause, review, and proceed. I hope all of you enjoyed. Well, if you are done this much, it will be much easier for you. So I hope all of you enjoyed. Go through, discuss. As I said, look at the geometry. That's more important than. The analysis will not frighten you. In fact, you can foresee the analysis. You see that we are looking at graphs and functions and geometry. We see, saw that with the refining refinement, the lower sums keep blowing up, going up. They increase, and upper sums keep decreasing. In other words, geometrically, what does it say? We have the graph of a function, and it said that when I refine the partition, I am trying to approximate the area from below. From inside, so the better the partition, then yeah, better the approximation. It keeps increasing. Similarly, low upper sum. When I look at what happens, better the partition, upper sum comes down and down, so that I get much better approximation to the area. This intuition is what you should have. Okay, we will meet again. Please keep going. Go go through. Go through this. Take care. Stay safe.